Hi everyone, welcome to our lecture on tax remedies. Today, we'll walk through the entire process in tax assessment from tax audit up to the denial by the BIR of a taxpayer's request. Of course, we will discuss the administrative and judicial remedies of a taxpayer in a disputed assessment. Let's begin. What is an assessment? It is a notice to the effect that the amount is due from a taxpayer as a tax with a demand for payment of the same within a stated period of time. As a rule, the BIR observes prescriptive period in tax assessments. You have the 3 years and 10 years. The period for assessment is 3 years from the time the return is filed or from the time the return is due, whichever is later. 10 years if the taxpayer did not file a return. So internal revenue taxes shall be assessed within 10 years after the discovery of the failure to file the return. If the taxpayer filed a false or fraudulent return with intent to evade tax, internal revenue taxes shall be assessed within 10 years after the discovery of fraud or falsity. What is tax audit? It is a process of examining the books and records of a taxpayer to ascertain the correctness of the tax declared and paid by the taxpayer. The audit process commences with issuance of letter of authority or LOA to a taxpayer who has been selected for audit. The LOA is an official document that empowers the revenue officer to examine and scrutinize a taxpayer's books of accounts and other accounting records in order to determine the taxpayer's correct internal revenue tax liabilities. In short, tax audit is an examination of a taxpayer's compliance with the tax system by verifying the accuracy of income and deductions claimed by the taxpayer. The BIR issued Revenue Memorandum Circular Number 82-2022, which removed the requirement for the BIR to serve the LOA to the taxpayer within 30 days from issuance. Thus, the taxpayer can no longer refuse the service of the LOA or question its validity in case the document is served beyond 30 days. However, the deletion of the 30-day requirement should not be an excuse for the concerned revenue officer to delay its service. A LOA that remains unserved or has been served beyond 30 days from the date of issuance remains valid and enforceable, provided that the prescribed period to complete the audit process has not yet expired. Issuance of Notice of Discrepancy If a taxpayer is found to be liable for deficiency tax in the course of an investigation conducted by a revenue officer, he shall be informed in writing through a notice of discrepancy. The objective of issuing the notice of discrepancy is to inform the taxpayer of the discrepancy noted by the BIR during their investigation and provide the taxpayer an opportunity to present and explain the alleged discrepancies with relevant supporting documents and schedules. Discussion of discrepancy. If the taxpayer disagrees with the discrepancies detected during the audit or investigation, he must present an explanation and provide documents during the discussion to support his explanation. Under Revenue Regulation 22-2020, the taxpayer has five days from receipt of the notice of discrepancy to present documents and explain his side. Nonetheless, should the taxpayer need more time to present other documents in response to the notice of discrepancy, he may submit them after the discussion but not later than 30 days after receipt of the notice of discrepancy. Issuance of Preliminary Assessment Notice if after discussion of discrepancy, the taxpayer is still liable for deficiency tax and the taxpayer does not address the discrepancy through payment of the deficiency taxes, the investigating officer shall endorse the case to the reviewing office in the BIR for issuance of a deficiency tax assessment in the form of Preliminary Assessment Notice or PAN. PAN is issued within 10 days from the conclusion of the discussion. As a rule, the taxpayer may respond to PAN within 15 days from the date of receipt. Please take note, however, that Preliminary Assessment Notice shall not be required in any of the following cases. Number one, the finding for any deficiency tax is the result of mathematical error in the computation of tax as appearing on the face of the return. 
Second, a discrepancy has been determined between the tax withheld and the amount actually remitted by the withholding agent. Number three, a taxpayer who opted to claim a refund or tax credit of excess creditable withholding tax for a taxable period was determined to have carried over and automatically applied the same amount claimed against the estimated tax liabilities for the taxable quarter of the succeeding taxable year. Number four, the excise tax due on excisable articles has not been paid. Or number five, an article locally purchased or imported by an exempt person has been sold, traded, or transferred to a non-exam person. In which case, a formal letter of demand and final assessment notice shall be issued outright. Issuance of final letter of demand and final assessment notice. If the taxpayer fails to respond within 15 days from date of receipt of the PAN, he shall be considered in default, in which case, the final assessment notice and formal letter of demand shall be issued by the BIR calling for payment of the taxpayer's deficiency tax liability inclusive of the applicable penalties. The formal letter of demand and final assessment notice shall state the facts, the law, rules, regulations, or jurisprudence on which the assessment is based. Otherwise, the assessment shall be void. What should the taxpayer do if he receives a final assessment note but file an administrative protest? In the words of the Supreme Court, a disputed assessment is one wherein the taxpayer files an administrative protest against the formal letter of demand and assessment notice within 30 days from date of receipt thereof. The FAN may be protested administratively within 30 days by filing a written request for reconsideration or reinvestigation. The taxpayer shall state in his written request the nature of the protest if it is a request for reconsideration or reinvestigation. Just be specific because that will determine the course of action to be taken by the BIR in respect to your protest. In addition, if it is request for reinvestigation, always specify the newly discovered or additional evidence you intend to present. Also cite the date of the assessment notice. And finally, cite the applicable law, rules, and regulations or jurisprudence on which the protest is based. Otherwise, the protest shall be considered void and without force and effect. Always take note that no request for reconsideration or reinvestigation shall be granted on tax assessments that have already become final, executory, and demandable. What is a taxpayer's next remedy after the denial of his protest by the BIR? If the protest is denied in whole or in part by the BIR commissioner's duly authorized representative, the taxpayer may either appeal to the Court of Tax Appeals within 30 days from date of receipt of said decision, we call that judicial appeal, or elevate the protest through request for reconsideration to the BIR commissioner within 30 days from date of receipt of said decision, we call that administrative appeal. If the administrative appeal is denied in whole or in part by the BIR commissioner, the taxpayer may appeal to the Court of Tax Appeals within 30 days from the date of receipt of said decision. Do not file a motion for reconsideration to the BIR commissioner's denial of the protest. The motion for reconsideration shall not toll the 30-day period to appeal to the CTA. What is the taxpayer's remedy if the protest is not acted upon by the BIR? If no action is made within 180 days from the date of filing of the protest in case of a request for reconsideration or 180 days from the submission of complete documents in case of a request for reinvestigation, the taxpayer has two options. First, appeal to the Court of Tax Appeals within 30 days after the expiration of the 180-day period or second, await the final decision of the BIR on the disputed assessment. Under the first option, inaction by the BIR within the 180-day period shall be deemed a denial for purposes of allowing the taxpayer to appeal his case to the CTA. Jurisprudence held that this option is granted to empower the taxpayers who are usually held hostage with the BIR's inaction on their protests. In the second option, it follows that if the taxpayer waits for the decision of the BIR's authorized representative and the same is issued after the lapse of the 180-day period, the same may be appealed to the CTA or even to the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. It must be emphasized that in case of inaction on protested assessment within the 180-day period, the two options of the taxpayer to file a petition for review with the CTA within 30 days after the expiration of the 180-day period or await the final decision of the BIR on disputed assessment 
and appeal such final decision to the CTA within 30 days are mutually exclusive. Thus, the resort to one bars the application of the other. In Light Rail Transit versus BIR, the Supreme Court clarified the reckoning point of the 30-day period to file an appeal on the disputed assessment with the CTA if the taxpayer chooses to wait for the decision of the commissioner. It held under Revenue Regulation Number 12-99 if the protest is elevated to the Commissioner of Internal Revenue, the decision on disputed assessment by the Commissioner's duly authorized representative shall not be considered final, executory, and demandable, in which case the protest shall be decided by the Commissioner. Neither can the 30-day period for filing a petition for review with the CTA be reckoned from taxpayers' receipt of any of the following issuances from the BIR, the Preliminary Collection Letter, the final notice before seizure, warrant of restraint, and or levy. Like the final decision on disputed assessment, all of these were not final decisions on the appeal by the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. They remain tentative given the pendency of the taxpayer's appeal with the Office of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. As such, all were void and should be of no force and effect. In short, when a taxpayer chooses to wait for the final decision of the BIR, any issuance of collection letter, final notice before seizure or warrant of distraint or levy pending such final decision of the BIR commissioner should not be the reckoning point of the 30-day period to file an appeal with the CTA. Ultimately, the taxpayer may file his appeal to the CTA within 30 days from the receipt of the decision of the BIR Commissioner. Judicial Remedy Any party adversely affected by a decision, ruling, or inaction of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue may file an appeal with the Court of Tax Appeals within 30 days after the receipt of such decision or ruling or after the expiration of the period fixed by law for action, that is, after the lapse of the 180-day period. The case shall then be raffled to a Court of Tax Appeals division. Thereafter, a grieved party may file a motion for reconsideration or new trial within 15 days from receipt of the copy of the CTA division's decision. Third, a party adversely affected by a resolution of a CTA division and a motion for reconsideration or new trial may appeal to the CTA Unbank within 15 days from receipt of the copy of the decision. And finally, a party adversely affected by a decision or ruling of the CTA Unbank may appeal by filing with the Supreme Court a verified petition for review on certiorari within 15 days from receipt of a copy of the decision resolution as provided in Rule 45 of the Rules of Court. Gentle reminder, do not forget to attach the verification and certification against forum shopping as failure to comply shall be a cause for the dismissal of the petition. Take note also that the petition shall raise only questions of law which must be distinctly set forth. A review is not a matter of right but of sound judicial discretion and will be granted only when there are special and important reasons. Therefore, as a final reminder, before a party is allowed to seek the intervention of the courts, it is a precondition that he avail of all administrative processes afforded him, such that if remedies available within the administrative machinery, then such remedy must first be exhausted before the court's power of judicial review can be sought. Otherwise, the premature resort to the court is fatal to one's cause.